Greetings, young scientist. My name is Mr. Overholt. I am with the Science Department of Winston-Salem for Scythe County Schools. Today we're going to be learning from home. So we're making things happen a little bit differently than we normally would. Today our essential question is going to be, how does thermal energy transfer from one material to another at different temperatures? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a couple of things. One, we're going to be using this small beaker. that's about a 400 milliliter beaker. We're going to be using this clear tub. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill this one, this with hot water, and I'm going to be placing it inside this one and filling this with cold water. And we're going to see how thermal energy is transferring between those two bodies of water. I have a flask of hot water that came from my tap. The temperature of this water is right around 100 degrees. Now, research shows that 100 degree water can scald this child's skin. So please, please, please do not try this at home. Repeat after me. I will not try this at home because Mr. Overholt doesn't want anybody getting hurt. Thank you. So I'm going to take and pour 300 milliliters of water into my beaker. Okay, 300 milliliters. I'm going to set this in my tub. And now, carefully, I'm going to pour in my cold water that's right around 55 degrees into there. I don't want it to get into the beaker, so I'm just going to pour it in the outside tub. I'm going to pour it so that it is about the same height as the water in the beaker. So I have the two in here, one inside the other. Both water levels are about the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take thermometers. I have two thermometers that are going to be recording our temperature data from each of the water sources, and we're going to watch and see what happens as we do that. Stay tuned. All right, so we're going to add these two containers together. Our data is starting. We're going to hit the word, hit collect up here, and we're going to start graphing what it is that is our data. As we notice, we're starting off at 83 degrees for our, our hot water, and we've got 63 degrees for our cold water. We've added the two together. They're sitting inside, and now we're just going to sit back and watch and see what's happening with this as our thermal energy is interacting with each other with these two separate materials. Stay tuned. Now we notice that about three minutes, our temperatures have changed. Our warm temperature from temperature number one, our red line has decreased from around 83 down to 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Our cold temperature that started at 63 has only increased by a few tenths of a degree as we notice it is now at 63.6 and 0.7 degrees. So that is happening right now as well. Noticing our lines that our, our rate of increase is slow here with my colder one. And their rate of, rate of decrease is speeding. It was fast and it's slowed down. Let's keep watching. All right, we're at fi the, the five minute mark. At five minutes, we're now noticing that our temperature has decreased even more. We're down to 71 degrees Fahrenheit, and our, in, in, our blue line has increased in temperature from 63 up to 64.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So our lines are coming closer and closer together. The question I have, young scientists, is will our temperatures come together to be the same temperature? Will they come together? Let's wait and see. All right, so we have gone about seven minutes now where we've noticed that we've grown our temperatures have changed a little bit more a little bit closer a little bit closer if they continue at this rate they will come together now the question is ladies and gentlemen how long will it take for the temperatures of our warm water in temperature one the red line to reach the temperature of number two when will they come together at one spot in the middle Go ahead and record that in your science notebook. How long, what time will we, at what time will we have the two temperatures come together and be at one steady temperature? Okay, young scientists, we are back at 10 minute mark. Let's continue to see what our data is doing. We have been going for 10 minutes. Our temperatures have changed. As you notice, we've got a large curve coming down on our hot side with the temperature number one in the red line. We've got a, a slight increase coming with our cold side in the blue line with temperature two, but they are coming closer and closer together. 
Have we hit your hypothesis as to when those temperatures will be together? Did anybody say the 10-minute mark? The next question I have, please record this in your science notebook. What will the temperature be when they both are the same temperature? What will the temperature be when they both are the same temperature? Will it be 80 or 90 degrees? Will it be 50 degrees? Will it be somewhere around 68 degrees or 69 degrees? Will it be 65 degrees? Make your prediction as to what that will be. Let's keep looking. It has been 16 minutes since we started this. In the 16 minute mark, we have decreased our temperatures from the hot side and increased the temperature from our cold side. Notice right around here, you see a little hiccup that's in there. One anomaly, one little issue is as I stood up, my knee hit the cord and it stirred a little bit. So that's what that increases there. It's not because of the temperature increased more than it was in that location. It is because of what I did as I hit it. I'm going to keep this going. So if you think you need to adjust your time and your temperature is what you think it will be finally, then you might want to do that one. We're going to keep on going. We've been doing this for 20 minutes now. At 20 minute mark, our temperatures are now less than two degrees apart. At 20 minute mark, our warm temperature has decreased from being in the 80s to down to being at 69.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Our cold temperature has increased from in this low 60s up to 67.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Have we hit your mark? Have we already, did anybody say 20 minutes was going to be the time in which these two, two bodies of water would be the same temperature? If that was, make your next hypothesis. How much longer is it going to go? Nobody knows. What temperature do you think it will be? Can you put it to the nearest tenth of a degree? Do you think it will be 68.2? Do you think it will be 68.4? Do you think it will be 69.1? Do you think, make your predictions. Write it, write it down, label it, keep it in your notebook. All right, it's been 23 minutes since we started. Our temperatures are getting closer and closer. We are now less than, we are now less than two degrees away from each other. We're doing our best to stay away from each other so we don't change our data. We are seeing a little bit of a shakeup that's happening there. But we are now less than two degrees apart. We've been going for 35 minutes. 35 minutes. We have our temperatures are now under one degree apart. Noticing that it slows down a lot as we have gotten closer and closer. The temperatures in there have not changed a whole lot in the last several minutes. So we have to make sure that we're watching carefully is what this is. We'll keep on checking. All right, so we are now over 45 minutes of, of recording time, and we are sitting right at this less than a degree apart. Um, one of the factors I was not thinking about early on was the temperature of the room that I'm in. The temperature of the room that I'm in is sitting right around 69 degrees, so that's really close to where the temperature of my cold water is sitting and my warm water. That bump, what I had, when I bumped my left knee, hit the cord for the, the thermometer that is in the warm water. Ever since then, that temperature has increased and decreased a little bit here and there, um, a tenth or two. So that's kind of what's happened with that one. But it is sitting in a spot where the temperature in the room is very similar to it, so it is not losing its heat energy that it was. So we are going to stop this right here that we are really close we've gone to the length of a normal science lesson in, in the classroom we're going to wrap this all up in just a couple minutes